thank you. I just want to touch on really quickly, we're all very concerned about all of our homeless communities here and making sure that the entire city is a sanctuary for them. Um, I'm here tonight to bring attention to an issue that has come up repeatedly in recent events. We've been having public meetings on this. We've had citizens speak up about this. We have example after example from which to pull and examine. We have a concern in our country with what exactly constitutes freedom of speech. As all of you know, there is a certain expectation to surrender your freedom of speech when you run for office. It's not that you're no longer allowed to say whatever you want. Of course, that freedom is protected by the First Amendment. But you, when you become an elected official, you understand that there is an expectation to represent all people, regardless of race, gender, orientation, religion, or expression. When you run for office, you're running to work for the people. And you understand when you hold office that your communication becomes a matter of public record. We have sunshine laws not to protect our leaders, but to protect our citizens. Uh, you understand that when you hold office, you hold an extreme amount of power and privilege and hold the power to affect people's lives. And to avoid becoming a dictatorship, there are checks and balances put into place. What I would like to address tonight are not the rules governing those checks and balances. We have those in elections. I'm here to address the policies and procedures we have in place concerning public employees, people put into positions of power who we did not elect. Just like with a private corporation, our only uh, recourse against these people is to file a complaint with the boss. In this case, it would be Mr. Glasscock. It was recently expressed how unfair it is for a boss to have public pressure put on them to punish employees for their freedom of speech. And under the rules that govern a private company, I would agree. But we're not talking about a private company. We're discussing employees put in place to serve the public and paid for by our tax dollars. Uh, at this point, the line between public figure and private citizen becomes fuzzy. At what point does an employee of our government, an employee of the citizens of this city, become a public figure? We recently had a public input meeting with the CPT to discuss policies around social media within the department and how citizens view and interact with this content. Unfortunately, we never did get around to discussing the policy, but I did come through the policy on my own time. Social media is a large part of my background. I work with it every day. I moved here from San Francisco Bay Area about seven years ago, where I worked for a dot-com doing market research on social media for business applications. I worked in Silicon Valley while social media was being developed. Uh, and social media is a beast that's taken on a life of its own. It affects everybody's lives on a daily basis. Without any sort of policing or consequences of posting, social media has emboldened bullies and traumatized the vulnerable. It has real psychological impacts on everybody, and we need to be mindful of this when it comes to policies and procedures. I'm concerned about the policies we have governing this body of employees. Technology and developments have been moving and changing so rapidly, it would be almost impossible for our policies to keep pace. And due to recent events, people have become more emboldened to speak out and say things that have never been appropriate or acceptable in the past. The other thing that I found problematic with our current policy was there are no policies around repercussions of violations. I also understand that most corrections are a matter of HR based on circumstance and in context of the employee's history and not released to the public. But we have entered a time in history when lack of accountability is eroding public trust. We cannot afford to have trust in this body eroded. What I am asking for tonight is not only a review of the policy around communication of non-elected employees, but a policy about what happens in cases of violations. We should be able to know when someone needs to issue an apology for their words. We need to have an education process put into place for our non-elected employees to fully understand how and when they surrender their freedom of speech under the employment of this body of citizens of the city. We need to carefully address the implicit bias training provided to our staff. Our examining of this training has shown that it actually reinforces bias rather than working to dismantle it. We need input from more people of color on implicit bias training. We also need to do better. We all need to do better. We need to be more thoughtful and careful about the words that we speak and how those words affect other people. There are, not, there are enough calls for decorum towards us, but where is the decorum and how non-elected representatives and employees address citizens? This communication doesn't only affect city staff, but also people appointed to boards and commissions. This brings me to my second issue. We also have a need to address the deficiencies we see in public record, 
policies governing boards and commissions. At this moment, we don't assign clerks to all of the boards to assist in taking minutes or producing agendas or documents for public consumption. We don't record these meetings, nor do we make the audio recordings available to the public without sunshine requests. This is unacceptable. The work that happens on boards and commissions is just as valuable as the work that happens at city council and should be treated as such. I've been attending one of the board meetings for several months now, and oftentimes I'll find myself being one of the only people there. The public has stopped caring or never cared, and I feel that council regards them only as advisory and unimportant to the policymaking process of this council. We are not installing people with any expectation of knowledge about how the city operates, how public meetings are to function, the city charter, or the laws and ordinances specific to that board. We are not installing people to represent our city who understand implicit bias and how to communicate with people they are appointed to represent. I listen to meetings where 45 minutes are taking up to teach them about Robert's rules and not doing the tasks prescribed by their mission statements. All of this is unacceptable. Until we have a functioning board, why even bother having it at all? Why are we wasting our time and resources doing the absolute bare minimum? To do so is disrespectful to the citizens of the city. Not keeping proper records is an act of violence on our citizenship, and the only people who have access to the knowledge are people in positions of privilege. I take time out of my life to be here meeting after meeting because I have the privilege to do so. We need to do better for everybody else. In addition to addressing the policy deficiencies around non-elected employee communication, we are asking for more robust record keeping for the boards and commissions. It should not be up to a group of volunteers to film and record these meetings for the sake of public record. This is what our taxpayers are paying all of you to do. Mr. Mayor, you ran for re-election on the platform of both transparency and equity and inclusion. I'm asking you now to prove it. Improve transparency and address the issues of equity and inclusion in communication. Changing the culture of the city has to be a top-down approach. Thank you very much.